Welcome to the lecture series on neuronal dynamics. In this video, we look at the flux, which is a starting point to understand the Fokker Planck equation. So, here we have a couple of membrane potential trajectories. They are driven by external current. Occasionally, there might be a jump caused by here a negative and inhibitory spike arrival, and then we continue. And now the question is. If we take one of these reference values, an arbitrary potential u0, what is the flux through this reference value u0? And there are two types of flux. One is caused by the continuous movement of a trajectory, here driven by external drive, external current. And the other one is due to an excitatory spike arrival. So let's look at these two components separately. I will start with the flux by jumps. So here's my reference potential, my reference trajectory, my reference potential u0. And now we assume that a little jump is introduced caused by stochastic spike arrival. And now each stochastic spike arrival will have a effect that's represented by a difference or jump amplitude, difference in membrane, membrane potential, which I call delta u jump. Now let's look at this reference potential u0. All trajectories that are within this delta u jump below u0 will be kicked across. So this is kicked across. Another trajectory here would be kicked across. This trajectory would be kicked across and so forth. Therefore, the, this flux caused by jumps is the total density in the region below u0. u0 is an arbitrary reference potential, delta jump below. Delta u jump is the size of the jump effect of an excitatory spike, and we integrate up to u0. And now, how many jumps will happen? Well, in each unit of time, a certain fraction of spikes will arrive, and new is this spike arrival rate. So, fraction of a uh, number of spikes per unit of time leads to a jump flux across u0 caused by this expression for the flux. So, that was the first contribution to the flux, the flux by jumps. Now let's look at the second contribution. A smooth trajectory can also hit this reference potential u0. And now, how can we think about this? Well, look at the density of trajectories in a certain region. For example, here, again, in some arbitrary region, um, and the number of trajectory in that region, say it's a delta u, had nothing to do with the jumps. It's just for me to describe it. I have here four trajectories within this range delta u. And then in a specific time, big delta t, all four trajectories will have crossed this reference potential. Now the for the same number of reference, for the same number of trajectories, but if the slope is different, then you see with the same delta t, let me plot it like this, then maybe only two of the trajectories will have crossed within the same time delta t. In other words, the steeper the trajectories, which means the UDT or the speed, the upward speed, the higher the current, the probability flux through my reference potential U0. And then, of course, it also is important that I have trajectories in that region. And P of U0 is the density of the trajectories around U0. In summary, I have two terms that contribute to the flux. Both terms co are caused by a 
macroscopic view at the effects on many membrane potential trajectories, each described by a local differential equation. There is a continuous flux caused by the decay and the external input current. And then there's the jump flux caused by excitatory spike arrivals. And both contribute and the jumps caused um, by jump, the flux caused by jumps is proportional to the spike arrival rate and the flux caused by the systematic drift is caused by the density and by the slope of the membrane potential trajectory. So the flux has two components, a continuous component and a jump component. The, this flux is defined for arbitrary time t and arbitrary value of the membrane potential u. But later, we will see that a particularly important concept is the flux through the threshold. Hence, later we will evaluate j at the membrane potential equal to the threshold theta. Now, if we go to that, we must take into account that the threshold can only be reached from below. Moreover, as we'll see, the density at threshold must be zero because if we imagine that a neuron has a voltage just below the threshold, then the next excitatory spike arrival will immediately remove it. So it can never be there because there's always an next spike arriving. And in the presence of a threshold, the flux th through the threshold is important because it causes spike emission and leads to reset of the membrane potential. But before we add the threshold effects, we study the free solution, and that means the solution of this continuity equation in the presence of the flux, but in the absence of a threshold.